Hey guys, Coach Todd here. Hopefully my hat doesn't cause any kind of sh weird shadows, but uh, this is one of the, this video is probably, I've never been more scared to make a video, but I've also never been so joyed to make a video. Uh, and, and let me explain a bit is, um, I'm, I'm probably going to lose a lot of followers by saying what I'm going to say in this video. A lot of people are going to support me in it as well, but I am not making this video to be liked. That is, that is not my intent with this video. Uh, my intent of this video is to share with you guys on how to achieve an instant transformation and through that, the, that instant transformation brought about by a relationship with Jesus Christ. And a lot of you are already, you're already going to hit the pause button or clicking out of this because you just don't want to hear it. And that's totally fine. I get that. If you just want to watch my stuff for the health and nutrition tips, I love you. I love you so much. And I, I'm so happy that I can provide value to you. And if you don't want to watch this video, that's fine. Uh, but if you want to hear my story, where I'm coming from, why I think the way I think, um, I'd be um, so honored to have you listen to my story. So I just want to share with you guys a little bit about how God has worked in my life, how he has transformed me into the man I am today. Um, so I might as well just get right into it. Uh, growing up, um, I was not raised in a Christian home. I was probably raised... In a, I was raised, my mom did an amazing job. She was on her own, uh, single mother, working her butt off. Um, my mom is an amazing, amazing woman. Um, led a pretty normal childhood. I was an only child, so I didn't have uh, much competition growing up. So no, no weird, like, attention, attention, like, <laughs> psychological issues. <laughs> Maybe I was a little... My mom didn't spoil me. She made me work for everything. That's probably why she was a good mom. But, so yeah, I grew up an only child with a single mother. Um, and I will just say that my mother did not live a conventional lifestyle. I did not grow up in a conventional home. And I will leave it at that. Um, but the idea of God was always there that good people go to heaven Bad, the real, real bad people, you know, the rapists, the murderers, the child molesters, all the bad guys like Hitler, they go to hell. Okay, that's that was my my knowledge of spiritual things, I guess you would say. Um, when I did come into a relationship with Christ, it was actually, you know, God uses some pretty cool ways to get our attention. And the way he got my attention was this little five foot three and three quarter blonde girl in my sophomore year of high school. And, you know, we dated for about three months. And I don't care what she says, I broke up with her my sophomore year after three months. She did not break up with me. She's a liar. <laughs> I love you, Molly. <laughs> So, Molly and I dated for a while. I knew Molly's family um, had some sort of religious background or affiliation. I, it wasn't really, it didn't worry me, but um, she, I knew she had 11 brothers and sisters. So I figured they were Mormon or Catholic or something like that. We never had the discussion, though. So, Molly was my first girlfriend, real girlfriend. She was my first kiss. She was, she was... You know, my first, like, infatuation, she was just, I was this chubby kid, and this blonde girl liked me. This very great-looking blonde girl liked me, and I was just baffled by it. And I think she, the reason she liked me is because she was um, sheltered her whole life. Like, her family kept, kept them in a little box. They didn't have TV or anything. And I was this, like, little chubby kid with rosy cheeks. And I had, like, eight piercings at the time. I had two gauge holes in my ears at the time. You can still see the hole in my lip right here from there. I had my tongue pierced. 
Uh, I had my eyebrow pierced at the time. I had the back of my neck pierced. And Molly saw me and she was like, I was like, oh my goodness. And she started stalking me and following me to lunch and stuff. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world, this, that a blonde girl would stalk me. <laughs> so, but God used her to get my attention. And it wasn't until, you know, we broke up and later on that God put Molly and I together in a study hall. And that's where, where I just, uh, here she comes. I'm going to pause the video. Okay. Sorry, she was pulling the car into the garage. I didn't want all that noise on the video. So, so yeah, God put us together in a study hall together. And I was just like, first time she walked in, I was like, dang, Molly grew up. <laughs> and at that, at that time in my life, um, you know, I had some real, 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 real good friends and we had gotten pretty heavy into a, like the party scene. We would actually, I mean, every Friday night after, after the football games, we were back at my house drinking with, you know, 10 to 20 other people, um, Saturday nights and I was very well known for being able to beer bong faster and more than anybody else. That's what I was known for. Um, and we, there were times like uh, we would actually, on our lunch breaks for school, we would drive to my house, pound like three Coronas, and then come back to school. Um, I wouldn't consider myself an alcoholic. I was just kind of like I didn't need it. I just didn't, you know, every Friday and Saturday night, that's what we did. Um, it was, it was a, I could see how people can quickly fall into that uh, kind of lifestyle because it can't, I've, I saw a lot of my friends fall into it. Um, so I know how addictive it can be, but thankfully the Lord didn't let me go that far. But one day in study hall, Molly she came over to our table and she's like, hey, you should come to Campus Life with me. I didn't really know what Campus Life was, but I knew it was, you know, something to do with Christianity. Um, but they, it's a youth ministry, but they play games on the weeknight, or on certain days of the week, and then it's just basically a safe place for kids to hang out and uh, play games and stuff. But, excuse me. So, I agreed, my friends razzing me they're saying oh don't go to that effing christian thing you're you you do not know what you're doing this is stupid i was like okay guys i blonde girl i'm going <laughs> so i went and i don't remember exactly what uh alan he was the pastor at the time he he shared a message about jesus and and i knew about jesus but he shared actually from the bible and how it says that at one point there will be a judgment and that the only way you can escape judgment and get to heaven is if you're perfect. I was like, okay, I know I'm not perfect. It's like, and that's where Jesus comes in. Jesus died. He lived a perfect life, sinless life. And he died. He took the penalty for your sins. And the Bible says that if you believe on the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. His righteousness becomes your righteousness. His righteousness is imputed to you. Think of it like a bank account. This is an example he gave. It's like God has accredited righteousness to you. So when God looks at me, when I die, he, does, he no longer sees my sins. He sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ, and therefore God can accept me. And Alan, the, the, the youth pastor at the time, he asked after that message, he said, you know, and, and you can actually, you can have this tonight. And he said, I want you to imagine five years from now going on the path that you're on. It's like, where are you going to be in five years doing what you're doing now? And I knew it was a place I didn't want to be. I knew it was a place I didn't want to go. And he said, if you want 
to invite Christ into your life tonight, to give Him control and have Him be the Lord of your life, and know that you are saved, raise your hand. And I did. And I wanted it. And I, that, at that moment, God changed my heart. You know, I got two birthdays now. I have a birthday on November 14th, 1983. That's where Tammy Warren, where she was yelling and pushing, and I came out. Okay? I have a second birthday on October 10th, 2001, where I have a spiritual birth, where I became alive in Christ, where He changed my heart, my desires, my attitudes, everything in an instant. And it says that when you believe in Him, when you put your trust and your faith in Him for your salvation, it says He will send a helper to you, and that's God's Holy Spirit, and it says that He will dwell inside of you. So I have God's Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me now on October 10th, 2001. Amazing. I was changed in an instant. I no longer wanted the alcohol. I didn't want my, my speech changed. The way I spoke to people changed. The, my attitudes towards my mom changed and, you know, the rules that she set up changed. Not saying we didn't still have conflict, but my attitudes changed. Everything changed. And it was evident to a lot of people because a lot of people were really, really angry that I didn't want to do the drinking anymore, that I didn't want to hang out and do those kind of things anymore. God changed my heart. I didn't want those things anymore. He changed me in an instant. And I lost a lot of friends over it, or what I thought were friends. But fast forward, I'm out on my own. I get my own place. Um, Molly and I are still together. Oh, something fell in the garage. But I'm at my own place, and after that, I end up moving in with some roommates, my old buddies that I used to drink with, in fact. And I just want to say right now that I owe every single one of them an apology. The, the faith that I professed was not glorified by my actions. <coughs> Excuse me. The faith that I professed was not in the way I spoke, the way I acted. Um, it was, I did not walk the talk. Um, and I, you guys know who you are, Brian, Nick, Jason, Mike. I was a terrible example of what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And I apologize from the bottom of my heart that I misled you guys that way. I, the, the things I did and said were not what was in my heart. Yeah, okay, yeah, we had some good times, but I sinned against my God. And that breaks my heart and it breaks my heart that I was a terrible example to you guys so I apologize um, and I, I, I hope you guys can forgive me for that um, but through this whole time through this whole time that God is transforming me uh, changing my desires and whatnot one of the biggest weights on my shoulder um, for the f you know five years prior to Molly and I getting married and on into our marriage, I had struggled deeply with pornography. Something that to this day, I am very, very ashamed of. And I know a lot of men struggle with it. You, you know it's shameful. You don't want it, but you just can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. You can't get it out of your life. You can't stop thinking about it, even though you don't want to think about it. I know how shameful it is, and I know exactly what you're going through but there is deliverance one night Molly was out of town she was with her sisters doing something I can't remember what it was but I had stayed home we were current we were remodeling our house everything is torn apart we're living downstairs while we remodel the upstairs uh, and I'm I'm stayed home I'm at home while Molly's away and I'm I'm working on the stair where we we just installed hardwood floors and I was refinishing the stair I was finishing up the stairs, and I'm just sitting there praying to the Lord, just just this heavy burden on my heart, because I had tried to quit looking at pornography before and it was I was successful by my own strength for a few months at a time and then I'd fall right back into the sin, um, but this time was a little different I 
I just cried out to God and I said, I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. You have to take this away from me. You have to take it away. I can't live like this anymore. I don't want it. I'm so ashamed. I don't want this anymore. Take it away, please. Just begging to God, begging God to take this out of my life. And it wasn't audible, but God clearly, clearly spoke in my mind. You have to tell Molly. I was like, screw you. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know my wife. She will kill me. She'll chop things off. Okay? No way. I'm not doing it. And, I, you know, but God is still just heavier and heavier on my heart. You've got to tell your wife if you want this gone. You've got to tell her. You've got to confess your sin to her. She should know everything about you. She's your wife. So finally, I just prayed, prayed so deeply in fear, in so much fear of what my wife, the consequences. Like, was my family going to be broken apart? You know, she was pregnant with my son at the time. And I didn't know what was going to happen, but I, Molly came home that weekend and I, I, we laid down in bed that night and I said, Molly, I have to tell you something. And she's like, you know, the wife told me, she's like, what? Sort of like the, what did you do this time sound? And I told her that for the past five years I had been, I had been addicted to pornography and I mean, it crushed her. I, I still am ashamed of the amount of pain that I caused her. No wife should have to experience that. Um, but through the grace of God, you know, I prayed that he would soften her heart and give her the ability to forgive me because she, she actually said before we got married that if I ever looked at pornography, she would divorce me. She was that against it. And, and to this day, she can't explain why she was able to forgive me. I know exactly what it is. It was the grace and power of God by which she was able to forgive me. And praise the Lord, that desire, that issue, that sin that was so heavy on my shoulders has been completely taken out of my life. Not saying I'm not tempted anymore, okay? Satan knows exactly how to tempt me. The temptation will always be there, but I have strength through God's Holy Spirit. I Through past deliverances, you know, he's given me the strength to rise up against the temptation and defeat it through his power and his strength because I am weak and I recognize that now that I can't do it and I need his strength. And that's, that's where a lot of you guys are right now. I don't know what you're struggling with, but God has taken my life and my struggles and completely whew, just did a 180. Just did a, he's done a 180. And if you're going down a path, I'm going to ask you the same exact thing. I'm going to ask you the same exact thing that the youth pastor at that Cam's Life meeting asked me. Picture yourself five years from now going down the road you're on. Is that where you want to be? Is it? Or do you long for change? Do you know that there's, you know, you're searching for some sort of fulfillment, but you don't know what it is? I know exactly what it is, is you were designed to be in relationship with your creator. And if you're not, you have a giant hole that you're filling with other things, whether it be an addiction or a relationship or, or some sort of possession or some sort of ideology. Okay, You're trying to fill that void that can't be filled. It can only be filled by your creator. And God says that if you will repent of your sins, that means turn away from them. You change your thinking and you, t you change direction. You're no longer going towards your sin and what you desire and what you want, but you turn away and turn towards God and let Him lead you. You repent of your sins and put your faith and believe on the Lord Jesus that He went to the cross paid the penalty for your sins and died and was resurrected on the third day and promises you that you can have everlasting life if you believe on him. Okay, if you would do that, you would have the instant transformation too. He can take away the addictions. He can take away the emptiness. He can take away the shame that so many of us are so needlessly entangled in. 
He desires so much to be in relationship you with you. He desires so much for you just to come to him and accept the gift that he has offered. And I, if you were here in front of me, I would plead and I would beg with, for you to look into the things that I'm saying. Okay, the, it says in the Proverbs that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. I'm sorry, in the Psalms. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Okay, and while you may disagree with me, I'm going to tell you something that, I mean, will probably make you angry, but I think you know him. And the only reason you say that you don't is because you're suppressing the truth through your sin, through your unrighteousness. You know him. You were created. He created you with value. And he created you with worth and dignity. He created you in love. And he wants to give you all the blessings, all the blessings that come with being in a relationship with him. But just like a rebellious child, we turn away from him. We think that he doesn't know best for our lives. <laughs> we think that the person, the God who created us, doesn't know what's best for us. I'm like, no, I'm going to do it my way. Well, guess what? My way didn't work. My way led me into drinking a life of lewdness. It led me into a life controlled by lust and desires, unrighteous desires. So I hope and I pray that what I've said here strikes a chord with you. I, I pray that, you know, if, if you are searching, be diligent in that search for your answers. Be diligent. It says that if you search and knock, you know, the Lord will answer. The Lord will answer. I can promise you that. And he promises the same. Never stop that search. Go after him. Go after him and look for yourself and see if what I'm saying is true. So... Uh, this is a really long video. If you've stuck with it this long, God bless you. Uh, I hope my story, my testimony of how God has worked in my life and transformed me. You know, it says that in the, in the Bible that physical exercise profits a little. Uh, but, you know, being... I can't even remember what it says, so I'm not going to try to butcher that verse. But there are more important things than physical fitness. While I do believe it's a great way for me to glorify God, the, my Creator, by taking care of the body He's given me uh, and using my body to its fullest abilities, um, it's not everything there is. There's much more to this life than, than what you're seeing with your two eyes. Uh, and I think you know that. So I pray this video was a blessing to you. Um, I would love to hear your comments below. Uh, if you would, if, if this video was an inspiration to you, I would love it if you would share it um, because you know I've gone through, th through some things that I know a lot of men struggle with and they don't want it in their life. And in 1 Corinthians it says that God has allowed certain things to happen in our lives. It says that, um, I, I can't remember the exact words, but it says, God has allowed tribulation in your life so that you can comfort others with the comfort that you were once comforted with. So I pray that I can minister to the men out there who struggled with what I struggled with and help you guys see the light at the end of the tunnel and maybe even minister to you uh, and, you know, know that I'm praying for you in that regard, um, that you would turn to God and, and turn to His deliverance and rely on His strength to turn from that sin. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. So, again, if this video was a blessing to you, I would be so honored if you would share it uh, and leave your comments. And um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to... Uh, happy to answer your questions. So I will see you guys on the next video. Love you. God bless.